In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today is Septuagesima Sunday and begins the season of Septuagesima. Septuagesima meaning 70, the 70th day before Easter. Um, it's not exactly 70 days, but near enough. And the three Sundays before Ash Wednesday are called Septuagesima, which means 70, Sexagesima, which means 60th, the 60th day, and Quinquagesima, which means the 50th day. And all three are named for their numerical reference to Lent, in Latin, Quadragesima, which means 40, 40 days in preparation for the great solemnity of Easter. And so the short, the short season of Septuagesima, which is comprised of these three weeks, tell us that the great solemnity of Easter is there in the distance. And the church would now have us begin to turn our thoughts, desires, and devotions towards this solemnity that gradually approaches. Septuagesima is a time of voluntary fasting in preparation for the obligatory fast of Lent. During the season of Septuagesima, the Gloria and Alleluia are omitted. So instead of the Alleluia, you have the tract. And violet or purple, the vestments of penance are worn. In today's epistle, taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul compares our life to that of an athlete, like in an arena where we must fight and mortify ourselves if we wish to obtain victory. Let us think for a minute of an athlete. How much time and effort they put into training so that they can obtain a prize so that they can be victorious and become a master within that particular sport to become a champion. How much sacrifices are they willing to make in order to achieve this, these athletes? How many hardships are they willing to undergo to get to where they want to get to in order to be able to overcome their opponents? And all of this for a crown that will perish. And what about us? For eternal life, for an incorruptible crown. Are we willing to refrain ourselves from certain things whereby we are striving for mastery? So in a similar way that an athlete is able to give up things and make sacrifices to do without, to deny themselves to get a crown, will we do the same thing for eternal life? You know, dear brothers and sisters, our biggest opponent is ourselves. I am, am my worst enemy. That is who we have to beat, ourselves. Our opponent is ourselves. So we have to be victorious over ourselves. We have to know ourselves and master ourselves in order to receive an incorruptible crown. And St. Paul tells us how to do this. I chastise my body and I bring it into subjection. And in his letter to the Galatians, he tells us that they that are Christ's have crucified their flesh with the vices and concupiscences. So we all have to overcome our self-love. We have to fight against ourselves in order to be victorious. Now, loving one another and wanting good for another is not always easy for us. It's not easy for us to be benevolent, which means to want good for another. In today's epistle, 
We heard how in relation to an athlete, only he that wins the race gets the prize. But there is a reward that God offers to each one of us, the reward of eternal life, and he is offering this to each and every single one of us. Let us not be like those who complained when they saw that those who had labored less than they had, who came in at the eleventh hour, were given the same reward. The reward in the parable is eternal life, and the master of the vineyard is God. So we should want eternal life for everyone, dear brothers and sisters. Some convert later on in life. Some have always been Catholic. Let us remember the good thief who was saved during his last hour, during his last moments. And let us look at the cross, dear brothers and sisters, and see how much Jesus suffered, how he died for us, to give us all this reward, eternal life. But we have to willingly choose and accept this reward, dear brothers and sisters. Let us look at the cross and see the price he paid for each one of us, paying with his most precious blood, with his life. So let us, as we see the solemnity of Easter in the distance and Lent approaching, spend more time in front of the cross, in silence, looking at Jesus crucified. You can, if you like, pray the sorrowful mysteries while looking at the cross. You can, in fact, gain a plenary indulgence with the usual conditions, saying the prayer, Behold, O kind and most sweet Jesus, etc., reciting this prayer before a crucifix. So there's a, you can get a plenary indulgence as a prayer you can say before crucifix, where you can receive a plenary indulgence. But we need to have also these times of silence before the cross, where it's just you and Jesus speaking heart to heart, the words that are your own, even in silence. Try this, dear brothers and sisters. Find time in the day, even if it's five minutes, to just be before the cross, to just look at the cross and let Jesus Christ crucified speak to your heart. He speaks in silence, dear brothers and sisters. And this is something that is lacking in these times. Prayer before the crucifix. Give to Jesus on the cross all of your sufferings. Give to him all of your weaknesses. See his mercy for you and see how much he loves you. And you will begin to grow in love. And this is how you will win the race, dear brothers and sisters. So the athletes, they have their particular food and their diet, whatever. This is the way you will win the race. This is the way you will overcome yourself and bring everything into subjection. Union with the cross. Loving the cross. Spending some time with Jesus crucified, where it's you and him, and contemplate his five wounds. The secret, dear brothers and sisters, of this love of the cross is the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the one who will give this to us. We might have a crucifix in our house, in our room, but we don't really look at it. We just walk past the cross. We even have a nice crucifix on the high street. Look at it with a glance of love, dear brothers and sisters. Spend some time with Jesus crucified. Jesus crucified in the silence of your room, in the silence of your own home, and you will have a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. So, dear brothers and sisters, as Lent approaches in this season of Septuagesima, desire to have this love for the cross. Speak heart to heart with Jesus crucified, and he will reveal to you his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.